What is going on, Herd? Thanks for tuning in to another Black Sheep TV production. And actually, although this is the second video in the series, it's the first real video that's the series. First video is kind of a lead up video to get you here and understand what we're doing. And today's the first budget drift build. Now, if you haven't watched video one, I'll include a little link right now up in the in the corner or in the description, probably both. And that is our explanation of what you're looking at right now. So we're not going to explain it again. There's no need for that. But I have picked a vehicle, a vehicle that we're going to be using first, a vehicle that we're going to be building. As with all of these vehicles, it is a budget drift build. But unlike all of these vehicles, it is the one vehicle that I shafted the most in Does It Drift, and it was not intentional. It's time we get back in this thing, and we give it a real shot. So today's episode is going to be the Imponte Ruiner. I realized when I was going out to get one that you can't buy one. You actually have to get one off the streets. Of course, all of these cars in this series were found on the streets. However, I figured out that you just you could not buy one. It took me a while to actually get the vehicle to spawn. Once they spawn, they're everywhere, but it took me a while. It definitely did. Once the vehicle does spawn in free mode, you have a couple different versions that you need to be looking at. Now, what's, what spurred me to telling you guys this is I've seen the big gulp, and that might even be different too. I'll have to pay attention to that as we move into the future. Maybe you can even get them without the big gulp in there, you know, the burger shot drink. But the main difference is the roof, guys. The roof, it has a T-top. So some of them have the glass roof with no, no deal there, and some of them actually have the painted hard top there like that. Oh, we passed our passed our destination as well. Now, I know a lot of people hate on the Ruiner, the hot fixes that it's come to in the past, and uh, it does still drift. That is the reality of it. It does still drift. Now, I am just now becoming kind of acquainted and kind of trying to get it on a regular basis where I'm practicing the clutch kicking technique. So I'm just now kind of learning what vehicles clutch kick and which ones don't the best. I mean, the, most vehicles will use the double clutching technique coming from the GTA racing aspect. However, not all of them will actually do the good speed boost for the drifting, like what you need for drifting. So I know you guys have been asking to see some budget drift builds and just drift builds in general. So I think you will enjoy this and let's get right into this. So armor, nothing changes. I'm not going to put any armor on my vehicle. I like running just straight stock on that. Brakes, this is going to be preferential again, but I don't do the brakes either. Uh, front bumper... This kind of comes into play where I think uh, it does affect the performance when it comes into clutch kicking, but I don't really recognize it in the single gear drifting technique. It makes it look a lot less muscle car-ish, so I think I am going to put it on there. Yeah, put that one on there. I don't really like that little oil cooler sitting on the outside. Uh, engine, 5,000. Okay. So we should probably be paying attention to what we spent. We spent 1,000 there. Let's get the iPhone out. So we have spent a thousand on our bumper. We didn't get any armor. We didn't get any brakes. The engine, did we purchase it? Five thousand and twenty-five is what it's going to cost us. Brings us to six thousand and twenty-five, obviously. Exhaust. We did prove in our drift miss video series that this does not affect performance. But let's see if anything looks better. Oh my goodness. Not really. Not really at all. In all honesty. I like the look of just the one single. I don't like the oval look. I like this look better, but it's way too giant. It needs to be small and chrome. I don't like the blue. So we're going to go with this. Plus 750. Explosives, of course, not doing that. Hood. We'll come back to hood. Horn, we'll leave alone. Lights. We'll come back to that, too. They're all like uh, the non-necessities, really. Hood does not affect the performance at all. So really, oh, loss and theft prevent. Full coverage, do I add this in? So here's the big thing. If you've got a project car and you have a budget on your project car, are you adding in your insurance in that budget? I know I didn't, and I know I probably wouldn't. I don't think a lot of people do. If I had a $15,000 budget for a car, I wouldn't be adding in my monthly insurance once the car is done. So we're not going to add this in. We're not going to add this 1250 in. But keep it in mind, it will cost you 1250 to get that insurance, which is a very small amount. It's actually nice that it's such a cheap amount. Um, I would suggest leaving it f on the on the standard, but if you got your custom, they'll give it to you for free as well. So we'll put the Takamira plates on there. Oh boy, respray. This one could take a while. Um, let's see what else we got. Spoiler, we're definitely not putting a spoiler on there, although it might make it look better. We can't. We just can't do it. 
too sticky as it is. Uh, I'm not going to put any more. To save ourselves a little money, actually $1,000 to be precise, we're going to go sport suspension, 3400 bucks. That's bringing us to 10175 spent. We're trying to keep this right in that 50000 mark. That's the goal. Transmission, 8000 This is where it's going to start stacking on some money, so 8000 30,000 bringing us to 48,175 just with like that snap of a finger so we're only two thousand dollars away even under two thousand dollars away from maxed out we don't have anything for real customization and we do want to do a little bit for customization we don't want to leave these things bone dry but just realize now guys that everything performance wise aside from tires which let's do that next this is where the decisions are really going to come into play i'd suggest probably doing muscle if you Muscle's the slipperiest. SUV's gonna come in second. Let's check out SUV. Sport, I'm feeling, is getting really borderline with the stickiness. Like, you're really getting borderline with it. We are looking for budget, too. That's the big deal. I think uh, muscle's actually gonna be our, our ticket for that, for the money-wise. Oh, there we go, 4,800 bucks. We can do that, for sure. Let's add that to the budget. So we did just break over our $50,000 barrier. We're at $52,975 spent with the purchase of that. Now it's going to come into color and making stuff color. So let's not do that right now. I'm going to do some dark smoke. I'm not going to spend, I'm going to save myself $1,500. We'll do the dark smoke. So I think the, the fact of the matter is you can get this thing built up for about $53,000 in all of its performance. If you minus the, the bumper that we got, you can get it actually in working order for about $52,000, $51,000, which that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a cheap, affordable drift car right there, getting yourself in the money. You got to find it on the street. So we got our wheels, we did our windows, we did armor, all this stuff is done. Okay, so this is going to come into drift build type. It does make it look more of a drift car having the carbon fiber, but as soon as we start messing with color, respray color, might be a whole different game. First off, are we going to run alloy or color on the wheels? That's a big one. Um... If you've been tuning into Black Sheep TV for any time now, you know that color is my downfall. This red is looking pretty nice, though. It's so hard to tell when your secondary is that. You know, such, such opposite. But I think this red is looking pretty nice. It's We're going to put it on the list of possibles. I like this red better, but of course it's way more expensive. We're trying to do budget here. Yeah, I think we're going to go with the red. The red is nice and affordable. It's a decent looking color, so add 920 on. Get our secondary to match. Yeah, looks, that looks nice. I like that. actually like that. Okay, so that brings us back to the wheels then. Do we want to do color on the wheels? Thinking black looks pretty nice there, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> let me take a look at how the, how the carbon hood looks here. That was the other big one, right? Carbon hood and, and lights. Alright, I don't like the look of that. I like the look of that a little more. Uh, I'm gonna do that. 1750 added onto the build. Just under, just under 60k right now. Definitely do not want to do any type of bulletproof tires if you're just joining in. Don't realize that you will not be able to stance your vehicle if you do that. Is that the build? Oh yeah, lights. That's the one thing. So 3,000. That's gonna bring us right up to about 63,000. I'm liking it. I gotta build it. Total build 63,185. It might be a little bit less than that because I added in, I rounded up for the secondary color of the red, but it's only by a few tens of dollars. You know, it's tens of dollars, 50 bucks, something like that. We got ourselves a V8 drift car on a budget for sure. You can get this thing for about 53,000, but if you want to make it look your way like we did here, you're looking at probably minimally right around 63,000 bucks. Okay, now you can go the next one. You can go like full ham mode on it too and do like neon lights and uh, chrome wheels and stuff like that. And then you're really going up there, but you're not doing a budget build anymore. So right now I could say it's all over. It's all done. Call it a video. It's a wrap. But you know me. We like to cover every aspect and we're going to actually take this drift build to the drift track now and put a little drift time in on it. See how it performs. Do we build a good vehicle? Is it worth the money? You've already seen it in Does It Drift. We did cut it a little short. You've seen all these vehicles in Does It Drift, but the whole fact of the matter here, guys, is let's take it to the track. 
All right, so you guys aren't going to recognize this track because I've never showed it. Uh, it's just kind of like a really, really quick track that I threw together. Probably took me about 40 minutes. And it's it's for... I don't even know if this thing stances normally. I can't remember. I remember the front does not stance normally. It's, it smokes. I remember that. Let's just try some single gear drifting technique here first. Yeah, I'd definitely cut this thing short and does it drift. It's a great drift car for sure. If you have it set up properly, that is. You might be able to run some sports tires on this, but we'll see what it's like when, once we actually get into clutch kicking it. Definitely a weird engagement on the on the double clutch. I've been getting used to the Rapid GT. It's uh, I didn't like it at all in the beginning. I'm starting to get a little bit more acquainted with it, but... I feel like this thing's actually a little bit more, uh, I don't know, I just haven't gotten my build down yet in the Rapid GT. I'm trying to just stick to the one car on it, but you know me. Gotta go on all kinds of cars, try it all out. That was terrible, that was a terrible one. So yeah, that's the main reason why I don't show it too much on my channel, just because it doesn't look that clean, but it's starting to get there. It's starting to get to the point where we're starting to figure it out. I've been just trying to research a lot of different YouTubers that have drifted in the past. A lot of them, I just noticed, are just not around anymore. Well, they are, but they play different games and stuff. I will say this. I will admit it to you clutch kickers out there. It is funner doing it this way once you actually start figuring it out but i will say i still say this to you single gear drifters it's way more difficult like it's probably five times more difficult realistically speaking maybe even more i mean in the single gear drifting technique it is part of this like you can certainly make it part of this ah, we messed that all up It's not too bad of a clutch kicking vehicle. It's a little bit more, uh, oh, there goes our back window. A little bit touchier, I will say that. It's hard for me still at this point in time to realize if I'm if I'm clutch kicking in first or second gear, or like as I'm happening, as I'm in it, as I'm in the little speed boost, like that right there, I don't know. I feel like that's the fast end of the single gear drifting technique, but let's try to get up into second gear and just engage in second. figure out if that's getting too fast either like I bog down and I can't engage double clutching anymore I can't engage the speed boost I can't figure out if that's because I go up into third if I'm going too fast or if I get going too slow you'd think that would be an obvious thing to know especially after you've drifted for a while in this game but it's tough this is a different different aspect here oh man that's one big thing I'll say about the rapid GT it just doesn't take any dang damage. I crashed that thing like that and all of a sudden it's so unpredictable I can't drift it anymore. Alright, so that one was definitely due to slowness. Ah. 
So we got like the slickest setup possible and I do feel like I, I wish it was just slightly slipperier. You know, just slightly slipperier. That's another big thing is I'm not exactly sure exactly how to build tracks for, for uh, the double clutching yet. So it's a lot different. Oh. I think the biggest crucial skill, well, there's two of them. Keeping the car in the drift, you know, not spinning out, not shifting up. And um, then the other one is figuring out exactly when to, when to engage the double clutch, when to pull the emergency brake, when to slide around a corner and when not to. right there I pulled the emergency brake and finished out the drift enough to actually make it look a little bit like a drift but in my opinion I should be able to pull away from that and I just I can't do it the car bogs down on me and it won't hit the won't hit that double clutch engagement Ugh, this car it's really grippy now Oh, that was close. That was close. I know we'd have it. Anyways, we're getting better. This car has had it. It's completely thrashed. It's it's done for. Look at it. Look at it bobbing around. And there you have it. A little bit more color added to the drift garage. I leave it in the comments below. Which one do you want to see next? You want to see the Schwartz or you want to see the Baguero, the Fuselage, the Futo, the old BMW? Which one you guys want to see next? We'll be testing them all in the same way since does it drift is like predominantly the single gear drifting technique and that's where they're being judged from i really want to stick to you know obviously we know that they drift in that sense i want to stick to clutch kicking them and see how they do in that sense but even if they don't perform that well we still know they're good drift cars for the single gear drifting technique and if you want to have some fun on a shorter and mid-range track you will definitely be able to do so but with such demand from everybody else in the community and like everybody else competitively, everyone is using the clutch kicking technique. I have to say that. That has to be known. Um, it's not even 50-50. It's, it's, it's a giant amount of the community is uh, probably probably close to 75 to 80 percent and it's not because now, a lot of people think that's the only way to drift realistically they think that's the only way to drift in gta they don't realize that you can use the single gear drifting technique which i think is one of the big reasons why my video did so well and how to drift in that sense People just didn't realize it, didn't know that you could drift in this sense, and the other way is so dang difficult, you got to practice for so long to do it, that they just kind of give up on it right away. So, it's cool to have a platform that, you know, lesser skilled, or just people that don't have a ton of time to play GTA, can still drift and have a good time, but they're going to be going slower behind you, they're not going to be able to tandem next to a clutch kicker, and that's really where this is uh, being fueled from, is I want to be the best drifter I can be in GTA, um... And that's straight up. That's where it really comes down to. So you'll be seeing lots of clutch kicking. You'll be seeing all these vehicles in their prime. And uh, I'm really hoping that I'm really hoping that these two in the end perform well in clutch kicking. Although I don't know if either of them do. Uh, I think this one's this one's clutch kicking ability is quite good. I don't know. I just don't know. We're gonna have to see. So you guys are gonna vote. You guys are gonna tell me. And so I won't be voting. This will be a very very live style series. Some of the some of the videos you see are like, uh, say, a week old. They were edited a week ago, and they just didn't fit in to conform the way that I was posting with the channel until they got posted. Then they fit in. Okay, now perfect timing. And that's how a lot of the motocross is. I have a lot of motocross videos built up, ready to go. But I only want to release, like, one every so often. So, And that's what you're also seeing. I'm trying to add in little bits of news in the end of all my videos for you guys. If you are tuning in and you are still listening, you know I appreciate you greatly. Uh, if you listen to all of my videos all the way through, that's that means so much to me. I mean, obviously, you guys know. I appreciate you tuning in, commenting, liking, subscribing, hit that notification bell if you haven't already, because that will definitely get you a lot more notifications than you're already getting, if you want to see my videos, that is. If not, that's all good. Just subscribe, and you'll get uh, the 
probably once a week, twice a week notification. But we're going for daily videos here on Black Sheep TV. We'll miss a day here and there, but I really want to do my best to try to get to daily for you guys. And I do have a second channel. If you guys have not checked out Black Sheep Lifestyle, I am now from pretty much starting up now. I'm starting to get a little bit of a video deal built up there too. I want to start posting every other day on that channel. So big things moving on YouTube, trying to build it up, trying to get something moving there, and um, just trying to get a fan base, trying to get you guys stronger, trying to get it bigger so we can have better things to do in the future. So as always, guys, I hope you all stay happy. I hope you all stay positive. I hope you all are enjoying this video series, and we'll definitely speak to you next time. Thank you.